Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about the two-way left turn lane and how to model it in MISIM. It's probably not the not the only way to model it. I haven't done a lot of these because where I am it's not a accepted layout or not a part of the standard. But as far as I understand that's the way it is done. And there is no magic trick or like a simple trick you need to know. Unfortunately, you need to do every single movement um, in detail by yourself. There is no way of, of having a middle lane and just put a red conflict area and they will sort it out. Um, so the way I think the easiest to do is if you start just building up both sides, both directions. So I have in each direction a three lane link. And you can just move these out and you can set up all the movements and stuff. It makes it simple. And then you just basically push everything back together. You are the best way to do it, I think, is if you use priority rules. Conflict areas, in my experience, don't really work reliably and will cause you a lot of headache. So I would just keep using priority rules because you need to control everything. The way you will control everything is first is priority rules, second is cutting sec, uh, links and using uh, these mid block connectors by forcing vehicles to change lanes. So lane changing distance, emergency lane changing distance um, is going to be your friend. And also at the end, you need to force vehicles back. And also in this one, in these connectors, you need to make sure that you don't allow vehicles to use this middle lane for overtaking and other movements. Um, so you need to make sure that the length, the length of the link is smaller than the lane change in distance set up here. So they are not going to be able to just drive in and then drive out. Once you set up your connectors, you need to start working on the um, priority rules. And also here, the lane changing distance and emergency lane, change, emergency lane changing distance need to be set up. When vehicles drive in these, in the middle lane, they need to use it in a way that when they come out, they drive into the middle and then they change lane and they drive in these one. They are not allowed to drive in the middle. That is only for the um, turning movements. So you need to make sure that vehicles drive in and drive out and they spend as less um, time in it as possible. So you don't want vehicles to, let's say, drive in here and drive all the way if they want to turn left here. You will achieve these by cutting the links, as I showed before, and create these um, these connectors. So with these, you can achieve that vehicles will only be able to drive in like here if they want to turn left. And vehicles coming into the middle, let's say here, will also need to go out here because they can't keep driving in the middle. The way to do it is you use lane changing distances, the emergency one, this stop distance or position, how they call it. And for example, here I used 25. And with that 25, what I achieve is basically if someone comes out from here, this is the last place they can be. So in that way, you can make sure that whoever turns in here will have this um, stretch for themselves. So if someone comes here, we'll change the lane in advance. Also here, as you can see, you can create these sections and you can control where they can come in. You can cut uh, those links. So that's fine. So that's the way you do that part. 
in terms of priorities and conflicts. So you need to set up priority rules, of course, for every single movement, but um, we could need to give way, obviously. So if you turn left, you have the right of way. And here you only give way to these ones. So you can just create these um, these conflict markers. But if you come out from here, um, so as you can see, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the shapes and the curves. It doesn't really matter for this example. You can also add reduce speed areas or should add. So let's go back here. So if you have that, these guys need to give way for everyone coming on the main line. But they also need to give way anyone who is here. And as you can see here, I only have this triangle shows the headway. So that it can be no vehicle here. But they also need to give a gap. So there is a clearance and a gap time. Sorry, I didn't use the headway correctly. So it's basically clearance instead of headway. So with this way, four seconds is the time that a vehicle um, from here need to give. So that should be a four second gap. I think in this example, four seconds was better than three. Three seemed to be very low. And the clearance is five meter, just to make sure there is no vehicle, that if there is some slow movement, but it's, it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. Just by default, it is added there. So it, it's not important to delete it. However, as you can see here, so this conflict marker comes to be this one. And as you can see here, the triangle shows a much larger clearance. It is 15 meters. That is important because someone comes out from this approach, they drive into this lane and they will change, make their lane change somewhere here. So you need to make sure that from here, no one will drive onto this lane if someone is already here on, in the middle. Also, this also belongs to this one. So here, you must give way if someone is turning. And as you can see here, I use a gap time of four seconds, but I use a much larger clearance of 20 meters. So I make sure that anyone is in already doing the turn or approaching that left turn will have um, a clear left turn. So that guy will wait here. And you basically do the same everywhere. So if you see here, I didn't put anyone here because I don't think I even put a, in this example a, a route for that. So here, you do the same. I just, he, here I just use two. Uh, basically I can just delete this. Um, it's not really that important. <laughs> but you can also add maybe 20 meters here. Um, so if you are here, then you need to give way for these. Again, the left turn and the main line. So as you can see, it is, you need to do every single one of them and treat them as a separate intersection. And you need to just basically run your model and check the movements. And if you see anything wrong, then you add another priority rule and another priority rule. And you make sure that you utilize this trick where you have that. So with that again, what you do is you basically control when these guys can need to merge in. And also you can add priority rules here in the middle. So if you have a very close, um, another approach here, you can also stop vehicles, um, let's say, here, if there is someone else on this other movement, let's say if there is anyone here, so I don't need headway there, but I need the clearance. <laughs> so here, 
I edit this marker, so I just check, and as you see, this marker is on the left bound, or is, sorry, west bound, and this one is on the west bound movement. So if you want to turn, but if you have an approach much closer, and you need to make sure that you don't drive in here, and you need to give way for someone to make that turn, you do that. And that can be the case here as well. So if you don't do this, so if you don't force vehicles out, you can also just add um, maybe a priority rule there. Just one sec, let me just move this. Um, so we are waiting on this one. So anyone comes on this one. Let's say 20 meter. So I can make a vehicle stop here and wait to make sure that this movement is clear. And you can also add another marker here if you need to, to wait until this guy clears out and then they will make the move. But they should be able to make the move. If they come in here, they should be able to make that lane change immediately, basically here. So I think these are the basics. So you need to basically go through each and one of the approach, uh, accesses, site accesses to uh, model and also you need to understand that um, they use these two-way left turns on roads where you don't really have a very high volume of traffic otherwise it would be a dangerous um, way to do anything so as you can see everyone moves in everyone moves in Waits. That guy also just did the turn. As you can see here, so it is waiting until that changes the lanes. Same again. So this is the way it works. However, there are some considerations you need to be careful. So if you have Let's say vehicles um, not obeying the priority rule. So I can show you just a trick for the future. Um, so let me wait until someone comes. So here a guy. So here, if you go to the attributes, you can add these leading target interaction type target types so you can see what is the next so you can see that it sees the priority rule however the same vehicle if I move this link shorter I go to the same timestamp around 40 something it was And you can see now, it cannot see the priority rule. It only sees the reduced paid areas. Because there was not enough distance for it to consider it. So you need to make sure that you allow enough, enough space for it to slow down and to see it. So there are some tricks or trips for you. So I hope it was helpful. I know you wanted probably a more like a one size fits all solution and like a super trick, but unfortunately there is no, or at least I'm not aware of it. So um, it is what it is, I guess. You just need to make sure that you check the model, the simulation, and you uh, debug it, and just keep adding uh, priority rules and and these um, connectors and play around with emergency stopping and uh, priority rules and markers and clearances. Thanks for watching.